Good morning and welcome to the live stream service at the Boonville Church of Christ. We want to welcome any visitors that are watching online. Uh, we want you to uh, visit our website if you are, are looking to give online. You can do so by e-check or card. Also, you can, uh, m you can find out where to mail or deliver your weekly contributions at our website below. Parents, we do have Bible class resources on the website specific to your child's Bible classes to help continue your child's Bible study at home. This is updated weekly and includes links to past material all the way back to March the 22nd. Reminder to all of our members, the Lord's Supper emblems are available for pickup in the annex until 6 p.m. during the week. We will stream our services at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday and 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. If you just video search at Boomville COC to find our channel on YouTube or our Facebook page. And we really want to emphasize the audio. You can call 662-554-4200 and press 1 for those without internet access and you will receive an automatic call each time we stream our services. And if we can assist you in any way, please feel free to call one of the elders or deacons to let us know your needs or send us a message through Facebook or email our office. There will be Bible studies uh, later today hosted on Zoom. The youth will be at 1130. Following the worship stream, this will be hosted by Jordan Coates and ladies at 2 p.m. hosted by Lauren Brumley. For details, see our Facebook group. Uh, leading the service today, Brother Aaron Foster will be preaching and uh, Brother Jeremy Jones will be leading our singing. Let's all worship together. Come to the table of grace, for there is mercy. Come just as you are, we are all unworthy to enter the presence of God, for He is holy. Lift up your heart, lift up your hands, fall on your knees and pray for the King of kings and the love he brings is here in this place. We raise our voices, raise our song, Offer him our praise for the King of kings and the joy he brings is here, he is here. Lift up your voice, lift up your hands, fall on your knees and pray. For the King of kings and the love he brings is here in this place. We raise our voices, raise our song, offer him our praise. For the King of kings and the joy he brings is here. He is here for the King of kings and the joy he brings is here. He is here in this place. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my 
soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul. I'll worship your holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. O oh, my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. Lord. Listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, and send us grace. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, and send us grace. Bow with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day, and we thank you for all the many blessings of life. God, we thank you for the health you've blessed us with this morning. But God, we ask that you please be with us today. Please be all, with all of those that are sick, with all of those that are hurting. And God, please be with us during this time of uncertainty. Please give us courage. Please give us assurance. Please give us faith to trust in you for all that we need. God, we pray that this time of illness and this virus will end soon, God, but we also pray that you will continue to strengthen us and supply us with all the things that we need. God, we pray that you forgive us where we failed you. And God, we just ask this morning that we lean on you and not our own understanding. And Lord, help us to remember that this too will pass. And let us put all of our faith and all of our trust in you. We love you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I 
bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. There is only one God, there is only one King, there is only one body, that is why we can sing. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with love. A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's Word. Good morning. I want to echo some of the sentiments that uh, guys already presented to you of course, we want to welcome you to our services this morning. Of course, if you're a visitor, uh, we, we want you to know how thankful we are that you're watching this morning or, or whatever time it may be that you're watching this. Um, we, we here, of course, are, are, are going through these remote services the best we can. And uh, I'm just honored today that the elders have provided me an opportunity to, con to connect with you this way, uh, to share this opportunity with you. I know many of you are at home this morning who are watching, uh, but, but so, so thankful that, and so humbled that I'm, that I'm able to, uh, to stand before you. But I want to start with this. Uh, I want to say this. I miss you. I, don't, I know that those words are coming from me, but I don't want you to think that I'm saying these words or the only one saying these words. There's hundreds of people that normally fill these pews that want to tell you that they miss you. I was thinking just the other day that uh, only the people on the right side sometimes struggle moving over to the left side to talk at the end of services, but even they want to tell those on the left side that they miss them. The people in the back want to tell the people in the front. The Bible class teachers want to tell their students, and, and the students want to tell their Bible class teachers how much they miss them. I know that since the last time we met, um, last Wednesday, I believe it was, that the president came out and he gave God what I think is, uh, what most people are saying, one of his most somber messages since all this has started happening. And, I, and all the graphs that he showed up there, if we didn't do what we were doing this morning, how many deaths there would be, and then you know, with us, all these guidelines and things that we're trying to do, we're still going to have a lot of deaths. And he said his exact words, I think, are the next two weeks are going to be very painful. So the elders are making the right decision. We are, we are as a congregation, doing the wise thing. It still doesn't make it easy. And it still doesn't mean that all of us are not impacted by this in some way or another. So I wanted to start with, I miss you, but I also want every single person to, to know, and God mentioned this in his, in his introductory remarks, that it is still our essential business to take care of you. Now we will follow the guidelines, we will do what the governor says, what the president says, but if you need anything, please do not hesitate to call somebody. 
because it is our essential business to support and take care of you. And we will do our best to do that with the guidelines provided for us. So I'm, I'm going to connect with you a little bit here through talking about how this lesson came about. Um, I was talking to a guy earlier this morning before we started, and, and by the way, it's just two, three of us here, and I'm, I'm so honored to be in this building with Guy and Jeremy, and I appreciate them so much. But I, I had a lesson planned, and I, and I thought about it basically Monday through Thursday, and I had my outline, I had everything ready to go, and then Thursday afternoon or, or Thursday morning, one of the others, I was driving to work. And I started thinking about the fact that I'm going to be standing here in this large auditorium with just two other people. And my thoughts changed. My everything I wanted to say changed. And so I had another thought that I want to present to you. And I have another lesson now planned that I want to present to you. And I jumped up here in a hurry and I left my mic. I left my clicker. And this is the lesson that, that I want to share. Now, this is the thought that dominated my mind. What do you miss about our church assemblies? Because I knew I would be standing here and I'd be talking to two people. Now, I know you're worshiping at home and I know there's a lot of people hopefully watching this at home and we're connecting that way, but it made me think, what have I missed? We've had a couple weeks now of this remote worship, of virtual worshiping, and I'm so thankful for, I'm really extremely thankful for all the brothers and sisters who are out there working very hard for us to have our remote services at home. But there's still, it's, it's different. And it's, sometimes it takes us missing something for a couple of weeks for us to realize what we had and to truly recognize what we're missing. So I'm asking this question to you. What do you miss about our church assemblies? And I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I know most of you won't do this, but I'm asking you to take your phones out or to grab a piece of paper, because I'm going to reference this later. And, and listen, I know if you're at home, you can run real quick to your drawer right there in your kitchen. You can grab that pen. You have that drawer with all your pens in it and your pieces of paper, you can grab one. And if you don't do that, at least take your phone out and start typing or, or consider. and Start listing in your mind, what do you miss about our church assemblies? Now, I realize this topic, by the way, could, and, and I don't want to change it, but I, I realize this topic could could kind of shift toward it's the purpose of our worship assemblies, but I don't want to get that deep this morning. I want to keep it simple. I want us to consider what we're missing by not being able to gather together. So I'm going to start with some of the simple things, and then I'll lead into maybe a few more that are, are more specific. And, and the first one that came to mind as, as I was thinking about this and what I miss about our, worship, our, our, our assemblies together is just the worship that we share. I have a few verses here that you can consider. In Habakkuk chapter 2, uh, basically in that chapter, he's, he's scolding the Chaldeans for their idol worship. And at the very end of that chapter, he says this common verse that we all remember. He says, now remember the Lord is in His holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before Him. We know that Matthew chapter 18 verse 20 says where two or three are gathered together, the Lord's with them. And, and I know He's with you this morning at home and He's with us in here because we're gathered together to, to worship God. And I, and I get that. But we also know in Acts chapter 2, verse 42, as soon as the church was established, one of the first verses you read is the one where it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine, teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayers. They were worshiping together. And I miss it. I absolutely miss it. I miss the singing of hundreds of people praising our Lord. We try to do it at home, and I'll be blunt, Gibson and Turner just can't carry the tenor and bass portions like you can. I miss it. I miss the prayers. I'm so thankful I got to hear God pray this morning. 
I miss the prayers because we have so many men here who are so wise and so humble and they stand before us and they lead us in such a way that's uplifting and encouraging. I miss communion and sharing that meal with you. Looking forward to the day when Christ comes. It's just not the same. Not saying we can't do it from home and we're going to have to do it from home for a significant period of time, but it's just not the same. And I miss it. I feel like the psalmist in, the, in Psalms chapter 84, verses 1 through 4, he says this, he says, How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at, her, at your altars. O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, Blessed are those who dwell in your house ever singing your praise. Oh, I feel that way now. I miss our worship time together. But now I ask you, what do you miss? What do you miss about the worship time together? Or what are you missing about us not being able to assemble together? I miss our spiritual family. I miss the people. Now, I'll, I'll be open with you. I, I am a, I consider myself an introvert. I, I really thought I could survive. And I will. And you will, but I still need people and I miss my spiritual family. We know these verses. I'm going to give you a couple to consider. In Mark chapter 4, verse 31, and I'm not going to read this text all the way. You can read it on the screen. But we, we remember this scene. Scene is Jesus teaching the people and he's in a room and outside the room is his family, his mother and his brothers. And some versions say sisters. And, and, and so he's there and finally the word gets to him passing through the crowd that his family is sitting outside the door. And Jesus says, he makes a point. He says, who is my family? And then he says these words. He says, here, looking at those who were sitting with him, here is my mother and my brothers. I miss my family. Paul puts it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. He talks about this family, the church being a body. And he mentions the fact that, that you know, we all have, we're all are different members of this body. And I'll be open, I'm missing several members of my body. Cassie and I have never lived in a town where our family lived. We have always needed and relied on the church to be our family. And here in Boonville, it's no different. And when we gather together, when we assemble together, it allows us to fellowship and allows us to be together as families should be together. I miss that. I miss that. But I ask you what, do you, what do you miss? I hope you're still thinking about it. I hope you're still considering it. What do you miss? Let me be a little bit more specific, though. I miss our older members. I don't know how many of you are able to watch this, but this is what I want to tell you. Every, every time we assemble and you walk through those doors and you do your best to walk down these aisles to sit in these pews, I want you to understand the encouragement that you give a young man like myself. I want you to understand the lessons that you teach our young people because I know it's easier for you to stay at home. I understand you could stay at home and everything be okay, but you come because you love your spiritual family. And it means so much. I miss the old men that stand in the back. I miss the group of ladies that huddle after services in the auditorium. I miss our young people, the energy, their attitude, their humble spirit, their heart. I miss listening to babies cry in this auditorium because, quite frankly, it reminds me that the church is, there is a future for the church, and, and, and even then it reminds me of all these young mothers and fathers who are doing the best they can to train their children up. 
I miss these things. But what do you miss? Please keep thinking. Please keep writing them down. I'm going to have you reference them later, so please follow along with me here. I miss the atmosphere. I'm going to explain that in a little bit more detail here. I'm going to take you first. Let me just go ahead and take you there to 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13 and 14. This is, a, this is a beautiful scene, and one that I think is going to help me kind of portray this thought I'm trying to, trying to share with you. It, Solomon has built the temple. Now they're putting things in the temple, and specifically they are putting the Ark of the Covenant in the temple. So they've gathered everybody together, and they're having a big assembly, and they're they're having this big assembly to dedicate all that's going on. And listen to this image, or, or just read along with me. And it was the duty of the trumpeteers and the singers to make themselves heard in unison and praise and thanksgiving to the Lord. And when the song was raised with trumpets and cymbals and other musical instruments in praise to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. The house, the house of the Lord was filled with the clouds so that the priest could not stand to minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Now I realize, I realize that this is a unique situation. I realize that the temple was a unique situation. I understand that the walls of this building, and it, this building doesn't mean a thing. I get it. But when you walk in this building, when we are assembled together as children of God, the Lord fills its walls. And it's different. It's different. And I miss it. And let me tell you why it fills it. Because when I walk through those doors, when, when, when God's people are assembled together in these walls, when I walk through those doors, then I get the fruit of the Spirit. Because this room is filled with love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. And because of that, this room is different. Because we're the light of the world. It doesn't matter how dark it is outside. It doesn't matter how many temptations that I've been through during the day. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. I knew that I could walk through those doors and things would be different. That God would be filling this house because His people were present in it. I miss it. In a time where we probably need it the most, I need it the most. I miss that atmosphere, that escape from darkness that we always get when we assemble together. But what do you miss? Now, I'm still asking that question, and I know I'm giving you some of these thoughts, but I want you to, I need you to understand what do you miss? about not being able to assemble with your brethren. I miss the encouragement that I receive. I, I'm going to take you to the common verse, not because I'm telling you you don't need to be missing services, but, but for the reason and for the context of what Hebrews chapter 10 tells us. Now, in Hebrews chapter 10, this writer here is, is dealing with people apparently who are backsliding a bit. For whatever reason, persecution whatever that might be, and they were starting, it seems, to isolate themselves, to not draw attention to themselves. And one way to do that is, is don't meet. But he says, no, 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 you have to meet. And here's the reason why. You have to meet because you have to stir up love and good works with one another. You have to meet so you can encourage one another. It's another reason why we come to this building. It's another reason why we assemble together. It's so we can do that. And I miss it. I'm not going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 14, but I want to draw your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and do your own study here. Paul is talking to the Corinthians and he's specifically giving them instructions for their assemblies. 
He's saying this is how you ought to assemble. And he, and he talks about specific things they ought to be doing. And in that text, I want you to count how many times does Paul use the word edify or edification. Now, my count is about seven times. Seven times as he's going through instructions of how they ought to assemble, he makes sure that they understand the purpose of those assemblies is to, in, to edify one another. In verse 26, specifically in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says, let all things be done for the building up. Or some of your versions may say edification. Folks, I miss it. I absolutely miss it. But now, I didn't, I didn't come here this morning to preach a sermon of doom and gloom or one of sadness. I, I had, I want to preach this sermon. And I want to share with this with you because we're going to overcome. We're going to overcome. It's amazing that just a month ago, just one month ago, we were trying to figure out how we can get people to come to our assemblies on Sunday night and Wednesday night. And now, today, we're trying to figure out how we're going to overcome the fact that we can't assemble together. But we will overcome these challenges. And we will be stronger when the Lord wills for that time to be. But this is what I want to share with you now. I hope you have your list. I've asked you to make your list. If you don't have a list, surely, hopefully, if you've been listening to this, you've got a list of things that you miss about not being able to assemble together. And please, one of my purposes is to make sure you don't forget that. Please don't forget the power of our assemblies. Please don't forget what happens when we gather together as, as Christians. But that's not my sole purpose. I want you to look at your list. I want you to think about those things that you have thought of. What do you miss? And now I want you to, I want to encourage you. By the way, I'm not challenging you because we have enough challenges outside this door. But I want to encourage you. How can you overcome them this week? What can you do this week to overcome these things that we're missing? This is just things that I thought about. And I know you're doing this. We can participate in our worship the best we can. I, I, I'm going to be open here with you. The last few weeks I've had an opportunity to listen to my father preach. And that's been special to me and special to my children. But I missed participating and connecting with you. And so I'm going to, we're going to do that, and you need to do that the best that you can, remotely, virtually, however that is. And I want to commend you for already doing that. But I want to encourage you to continue to do so because that connection is important. When it comes to the atmosphere... I want you to start with your family. God, I don't know how it is at your house, but you put my kids in my house for three to four weeks the way we have. I don't know about you. The atmosphere gets a little bit challenging, doesn't it? I think I break up more fights in a day than I do say, hey, thanks for saying that for sure. But we set the tone, don't we? We set the tone, you set the tone, I set the tone, and, and our children are watching us. The people in our house are watching us. And we don't get to connect with people like we used to, but, but we do get on times to time, depending on essential business, we do connect with some. And your attitude, the atmosphere that you set will go a long way. And let me go ahead and go to social media. It seems like now more than ever, social media is being utilized for for the right reasons, I'm okay with it. But here's the point. What atmosphere are you setting in social media? Are you being argumentative? Are you being gloom and doom? Are you, are you showing that you're a Christian? Are you giving the understanding that, that you have a peace that maybe nobody else can understand?
when it comes to the people, when it comes to encouragement, find a way to connect. There's no shortage of ways in remote locations to connect with others. Call, write, pray. Of course, study God's Word. Do it often. Do it consistently. Let me give you a specific thing that you could do. And, and listen, my ideas, I'm sorry, I, I said my, my ideas here, but the, you, you come up with them. But one thing you could do is you could get a, your group of people together, three or four people, not together, I'm talking about an idea where maybe Guy and Jeremy and I, we, we, we have a plan of calling these 100 folks and we do it uh, based off of this schedule and we're going to do it this week. Not only does that make a connection with Guy and Jeremy, that also then makes a connection with 100 more people. Don't wait on somebody to tell you to do something. You figure it out. You look at your list and you determine how to overcome it. Because the church needs you. People need you. We need connection. And you need to work to connect with others. I'm going to close now with just saying this. I don't understand. We don't know what God has in store for us next. But this is what I do know. We are going to overcome because we are going to take care of each other. But I need your help. We need your help. So look at your list. What do you miss? And then figure out a way to overcome. And then when the day comes, and oh, I look forward to that day. I believe the singing in this auditorium is going to be the best it's ever been the day we get to assemble again. But until then, use the faith you have, the strength God has provided us, the grace he's given every single one of us to support and encourage the members of this congregation. Now, we normally offer an invitation at this time. Of course, we're, this is different times. We don't do that now. But what we do want to suggest, if you have any need, any need whatsoever, or if you have any questions or whatever that might be, please call, please call this number. One of our elders will talk to you, will assist you, will help you. They will get the right folks to you. We'll pray for you. We'll do whatever's needed. So don't forget, if you need anything, to let us know. Thank you for being here this morning and uh, participating in this service with us. At this time, we'll prepare our hearts and minds for the Lord's Supper. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, this do, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Bow with me. Dear God, we're so thankful for the sacrifice your son Jesus made on the cross of Calvary. We thank you for this bread. We pray that we 
partake of this bread in a manner that's pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Bow with me. Dear God, likewise, we thank you for the cup, which represents the blood that Christ shed on the cross so that we might be saved from our sins. We pray that we take of this cup in a manner that's pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for allowing us to come into your homes, allowing us to worship with you, sing songs of praise to our Lord and Savior. As we close this service today, I want to encourage you to share the word online. It's the best way we have to reach out to others, spread this video, spread the posts that we have online, spread Brother uh, Stephen's Five Minutes with Luke each week. Share the word with your friends. I pray that you will stay safe during this time. Pray for others. Reach out to others. Let them know that we still believe in our true Lord and that we care for others. Would you bow with me as we close in prayer? Father in heaven, we thank you so much for each and every blessing that you provide, for each and every gift that you've given us. Father God, we know that in times like this that many are scared, many are afraid, many are un uncertain of the future. Father God, we know that we have hope and we have trust in you. And Father God, we pray that we will depend on you, that we will strengthen one another, those that are in our homes, but those that are away from us, Father, in this time, for however long it may be. Help us to do everything that we can to reach out to others. Father God, we love you so much. We thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. Help us to be your hands and your feet in this world to reach out to those that are hurting and those that are in need. Help us to see those opportunities. We love you, Lord, and it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining us.